You're watching Math Feats Episode 26. I'm gonna make a video for each anime this season. You're watching episode 26. Okay, so I just finished watching episode 1 of Copcraft. No, there would not be any Minecraft references in this video. I enjoyed Copcraft quite a bit. This show was quite interesting. I've had my interest peaked. Okay, so this episode starts out with uh, two cops, Kay and Rick, sticking out inside of a car waiting for two guys to show up. They're cops. And they're waiting for two drug dealers to show up so that they can bust them. And so they, they finally, the drug dealers finally show up K talks about how, uh, you know, while he's waiting, he's talking about how he's upset that drug dealers are always late because he has a girl he wants to go meet and these guys are being late. What the fuck? And so they start to make the transaction, the deal, if you will. And what happens is that they say, hey, yeah, we got the fucking money. Y'all got the shit. They're like, hell yeah, we got the shit. And so they say, yeah, we have 50 grand right here, cold hard cash. To which point you're like, son, what drugs are they getting? And then you find out they pull out a jar, a glass jar. And what's in it is a little girl that they say is a fairy. Immediately I'm on board. Immediately. It's a naked fucking girl in a jar. This is what I've always wanted. Apparently you can make drugs with these fairy girls because Kay says, oh yeah, you can make some real good drugs with them. So like, just imagine there being a smaller like species and, and people just take them and turn them into drugs. Isn't that fucking insane? Like, isn't that an insane concept for society? Or just a thing that can happen? When are fucking- when are- when are bugs gonna start being put into drugs, huh? When- when am I gonna fucking- when am I gonna have, you know... When am I gonna get to- get my choice at cricket cocaine, huh? When- when do I get that? When is cricket cocaine hitting the shelves, man? I gotta know. <laughs> I'm trying to get some. Is it crick coke for short? Do I call it Crit Coke? I think Crit Coke is uh, the right the right term. So as soon as they give the guys the money and the guy gives them the jar of the fairy, immediately right after that, they pull out their badges and they say you're motherfucking under arrest, bitch. And they're like, shit. And so they handcuff them and they're reading the Miranda rights and shit. I guess that happens in Japan unless this is not a story based in Japan, which I guess that makes sense. But I mean, they're just reading their rights. So the guy, so uh, one of the guys that they arrest just keeps on chanting that. And uh, then he, he loses his pupils. They just disappear, you know, in, in classic anime fashion. And he starts to morph into a madman and you know he breaks the handcuffs off of his fucking arms and he fucking grabs our boy rick and he fucking chokes out rick and then and then and so Kay keeps shooting at the guy and then the guy pulls like rick's body towards him like faces it towards him so that and he's holding rick by the neck and then he just because you know Kay can't shoot in anything because he would be shooting rick he just fucking, like, crushes the shit out of Rick's neck. Rick is fucking dead, man. He's fucking dead. It's over for him. I'm not crying. You're fucking crying, stupid. Stupid. So after crushing Rick's fucking windpipe, he throws Rick at K. And, uh, K, you know, falls to the ground. And then, uh, the guy escapes. He takes the ferry and he dips. The other guys, I'm pretty sure, is still, like, uh, handcuffed. <laughs> it's tragic. 
pour one out for Rick, guys. So apparently this is a world where at some point a portal opened in the ocean where there were a bunch of fairies and monsters. And this is shown to us as just a like portal of a bunch of girls pretty good and so and so you know that, that that's cool and all whatever but like so our main character k matoba is a kind of witty um sarcastic kind of snarky guy and he's just a cop you know doing his thing he's pretty shooken up now because his partner of four years rick has just been fucking killed by some bastard and he wants to avenge his death. It's not like a angry, like, blind rage kind of avenge his death. Just like a, you know, man, I want to at least avenge the guy, you know, who I worked with for so long. He, he, uh, takes on the responsibility of telling Rick's wife what happens. And you get, like, this terrible, heartbreaking scene of, like, her getting it. I didn't think he'd fucking do it. I didn't think he would call her. I thought he would show up, you know, like every cop in every fucking show does. But nah, he fucking called her. And you basically see she's like washing dishes while the kids are playing in the background. And damn, son. So she, she gets the call and she's like, no, it can't be. And then she drops a dish that she's washing into the, into the water. And she falls to the floor and she's like crying. And then the kids are like, <gasps> mom, what's wrong? It's fucked up. It's deep. Son, free my son Rick, dude. Free Rick. So after all that bullshit exposition, we get into the OP, and the OP is a fucking jam. It's cool. I have big Kekai Sensen vibe in my brain now. It's better than Kekai Sensen, than all of Kekai Sensen's OPs were. It's just like Kekai Sensen's ED, but just in an OP and cool with action. And it looks great. I actually know it and more think about it. I feel like there's more of a like a kind of like a bacchano s style to it this show is hitting all the right spots the op just looks so good it's so fucking classy so motherfucking stylish i want to stand up i sat back down it's so colorful it's so nice there's fucking dudes shooting shit i like shooting shit oh my fucking god they put the lolly in different fucking outfits all right this show may just be the best show of the season how come i have not heard about this show how come everybody's talking about adi fureta but nobody is talking about copcraft when this shit is already godlike Oh yeah, Ari Fureta's my favorite anime. Ha! Shoot yourself dead, idiot. Oh, and then there's a super sweet dance scene of them of their silhouettes like dancing across like wireframe like cityscapes. I think that's like like uh electricity lines or something, or just like light lines throughout Japan. It's fucking cool, dude. And I'm jamming too, son. I'm dancing with them. I don't care. Y'all ain't telling me I'm not dancing. What, y'all thought I was I was about to watch them dance and not start dancing too? Anyway, this OP, I had fun. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Um, Hell yeah. So these shows that are like Kekai Sensen where there's a portal and you don't go inside the portal, but the portal has opened and now its inhabitants are around you and are living with you. In the case of Kekai Sensen in the city of New York, they, a portal opened up and basically now there's just a whole bunch of aliens living in uh, New York. That's not so different from real New York, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so we need a name because they're like isekais, but they're kind of, I guess you could say they're like a reverse isekai, right? Maybe? I don't know. Anyway, after the OP, there's the crime scene and you just have a bunch of cops inspecting the area and then, you know, his boss... K's boss tells him to go fucking to sleep. So a little bit later, after all that shit happens, some goons try and uh, fuck with K. And uh, this is where you learn that K is actually a badass. 
So K 1v3 triple kills them, you know, untouched, you know, perfect. And he leaves them <laughs> fucking like the retards they are. Pretty epic. So after he beats the asses of those goons and those gangsters, he basically, that's when he calls Rick's wife and tells them or tells her the bad news. And then he, you know, shuts it down for the night, you know, goes home, feeds his cat. His cat is cool. And his boss calls him and tells him that tomorrow he's gonna go meet a noble that may be related to the case with why Rick has died. Then we're on a boat and they're going out to the portal to go and receive this noble. And you learn that, you know, it's apparently a portal that people can't see, only uh, people from there can see. But we can find from like abstract other bullshit and so they finally get to where they're going and then the boat appears to them and it's this cool big drawn boat that is weirdly 2d and i guess maybe that's the style of that world because the boat is such a different like kind of medium than everything else we've seen so far and it's kind of interesting honestly i gotta say i i would 100 percent prefer having a 2d boat that looks like that and is like kind of painted and drawn rather than having a 3d boat that's cg and uh just feels weird i don't know i mean i just i think i mean hey i'm watching anime clearly i value drawn things more than 3d things you know and at the moment when they're revealing our new second character our second main character our co-protagonist Tilarna Exadilica. The music is just amazing and it's so good. And like the woman's vocals in the OST uh, are great. Uh, I feel like I am playing Nier Automata when listening to this music. It is just so nice, so calming. I feel like I've felt this song in Nier Automata before and it is very nice. Anyway, Talarna is pretty cute. Um, she's cool. I like her. I love her design. She is very exotic and flashy and stylish. She even has a whole lot of sass to her. You know, of course she does. Anyway, you realize that, you know, um, our character K here is a whole racist because he just hates aliens and uh, refuses to work with her, even though they both have the exact same goals and like want the exact same thing. And even though she looks just like him and like the only thing different about her is that she's I don't know short and then has like elf ears but other than that she looks just like him but he insists on calling her aliens this show is so weird that I hate that like shows where it's just like yeah we're just racist just cuz even though they literally look just like us who knows maybe me saying that is implying that I think that all white people all look the same <laughs> Which is completely true. And I swear to God, if you leave a comment saying, oh my God, this is an anime, they are Japanese. I know that, you stupid motherfucker. Shut up and don't ever watch a video again. Anyway, they force him to work with her because he's like the strongest and she wants the strongest and they're like hey you can have somebody who's more polite to you but uh you know i mean they're gonna be useless in every other scenario this guy's the only guy we got that's good i guess you know everyone else is worth shit everyone else ain't shit honestly facts i can get behind that message anyway whatever we get like a okay yeah they're just racist to her a couple times for a few minutes in the show and then she's in an elevator and she's trying to touch things and he's telling her not to touch things and she keeps trying to touch things. She's fucking wacky and is a child. You know what? So far in this episode, there has been no mention to how old she is. And I'm just waiting, man. I'm waiting for them to say that she's 900 years old. I'm waiting for them to say that she's older than him and that she's probably like 135 years old or something just because she has to be fuckable. And you know it's coming. You know they're gonna do it. This is apparently an adaptation of a light novel. Yeah, it's happening. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way it can't happen. And so now the dynamic Dumo is on the case and they are out to find that VIP fairy wherever she is. So the guy who, you know, took her and left, they caught that guy and interrogated him. Apparently somebody stole the VIP fairy. It was a Mexican group or something. He doesn't know their names. And uh, so now they're hunting down some Mexican group. Anyway, you find out that Kalarna is actually quite powerful. And you know, 
she cuts off a guy's tie and then she turns into a super saiyan and like is doing super action shit real fast it's pretty cool at a certain point later on in the episode whenever they go on a raid and they find out that somebody very recently was controlled and in the elevator that they're in right now and so they go and uh they go and she just like takes the lead takes charge and just goes out to go uh hunt this dude down you know what i'm saying they don't know what they're looking for but they're just following whatever track they can find you know with these kind of shows it's all about the journey you know what i'm saying so the episode ends while they're in the middle of that skirmish so we don't know how that skirmish concludes there are some other things that happen in the episode but that's basically everything that happens they get like a hint from like a thief or something or a criminal and that's about it overall i enjoyed this episode i thought it was pretty fun I am looking forward to the next episode. I'm intrigued and invested already. That said, this has been episode 26 of Math Feats. Thank you guys for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Math Feats forever.